Well, good morning. I think it's a good uh, moment to start. Um, on the agenda, it says maximize your wireless uh, WLAN. So I'm happy that there are still so many people in the room. It was the title that marketing uh, made up. Um, to give that some content, um, I decided to talk uh, to you about uh, how devices behave on uh, the wireless network. Um, so I have some examples of live networks, um, and I have some uh, information about uh, standards, how it's uh, different in uh, uh, in consumer grade Wi-Fi and in uh, in enterprise Wi-Fi. Um, we'll look uh, into handovers, um, how that happens in uh, larger networks. Uh, we'll look in the relevant standards, and um, yeah, just look to some data and to see how it's. Um, how it's working in uh, reality. Um, first, a short introduction about me. My name is Herman Robers. I uh, work as, uh, as a systems, uh, systems engineer uh, for Aruba Networks uh, in the Netherlands. So I had uh, Benelux as my region uh, uh, till the beginning of this year, but we're growing. And uh, at this moment, it's uh, just uh, the Netherlands. Before that, I had some uh, field experience as well. So I worked uh, for about 13 years as, as a security reseller, um, as a security engineer and a consultant. And uh, one of the uh, products uh, that Aruba has as well is a clear pass for network authentication. So if you have questions about that, um, I'll be around uh, today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, please let me know uh, your questions. And I have some uh, radio experience as well, uh, so I have my ham license. Uh, not very actively used, but uh, it's still there. So let's start about the big device problem, because uh, you probably know that uh, wireless LAN is uh, mostly about devices. Um, the big issue is that uh, there are all kinds of uh, manufacturers that are building uh, chipsets and those chipsets go into devices like this. There's software developed uh, to run on this. And uh, the big market, uh, especially for this uh, kind of devices, it's uh, consumers. And for consumers, uh, they typically have different networks uh, than that we see in uh, enterprises or in uh, larger, uh, uh, larger environments with uh, more access points. And uh, things that are uh, good in uh, a, a home environment are not typically good in, uh, in, in, in larger uh, network environments. So to first uh, get some idea about uh, what kind of uh, clients do we see on networks. This is, an, uh, uh, this is a report from uh, the Aruba corporate network. So um, it's October, I think it's two days ago. Um, over a week, uh, we see uh, uh, clients by OS, uh, the time spent on the network by OS, and the megabytes uh, used by OS. And uh, from this graph, uh, it's over 1,500 clients and uh, 500 gigabytes of data. Um, I saw this uh, is very interesting because we have uh, Mac OS X, which only 15% of the uh, clients also 15% of the time, but it has 42% uh, of all data. So uh, what we see, what we can learn from this, is that there are uh, good clients, there are bad clients, um, and maybe uh, the Aruba network uh, is not uh, the most representative network. Uh, but we also see on our network uh, that we've shifted from a 2.4 gigahertz uh, network to a 5 gigahertz uh, network. So um, if we have a look, um, the clients are 55% uh, already on 5 gigahertz and already 17% of all clients are uh, .11ac, the new gigabit uh, WLAN standard. If we look uh, not to client count, but to the data, uh, we see that uh, more than 90% of all data is transmitted over 5 uh, gigahertz. And uh, one of the things that uh, we'll see is that we need to move uh, as much clients to 5 gigahertz as possible. Um, and also for AC, while it's only 70% uh, 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 clients AC, 27% uh, uh, of the data is uh, moved over from those uh, AC uh, clients. 
However, if we uh, move to another uh, network, this is uh, uh, a university network, um, here we see uh, quite another uh, distribution. Uh, from the 11,000 clients, uh, we see that uh, 7.3 uh, uh, 7 thousand uh, are still on 2.4 gigahertz, and uh, yeah, almost 4,000 cli clients are on the 5 gigahertz, and uh, we also see here some 11 AC uh, clients. Uh, we see that uh, uh, coming up uh, quite often. Uh, this university only had uh, small areas with uh, 11 EC uh, deployed, but we see one client with a tree stream uh, 11 AC connected uh, at the moment that this uh, uh, screenshot was, uh, was captured. Um, I'm still looking why there are so uh, uh, many clients still on 2.4 gigahertz. But one of the uh, reasons might be uh, that uh, students uh, should buy their own uh, laptops. And if you look in web shops um, for consumer laptops, it's still uh, quite difficult to buy a laptop with 5 gigahertz. And that's probably because uh, the 5 gigahertz radio costs 50 cents extra in production, so that's 5 dollar in uh, uh, the retail price, and that uh, makes the difference. Uh, but in this kind of environment, uh, that is uh, that's critical, and that is uh, that is a problem. This is a uh, view of uh, what kind of devices are on uh, the network. A lot of Android, uh, so we uh, it overtook the uh, the iOS devices, um, and that are uh, statistics that we see uh, yeah all over the place, uh, quite uh, quite consistent. Another, uh, another example, uh, so not the corporate network, not, uh, uh, not on a university network, this is a, uh, uh, this is a public venue uh, where we had uh, 3,000 clients on the network, and uh, in that venue people don't walk around with uh, laptops, and good clients, they carry around uh, these kinds of uh, uh, clients. And uh, here we see again that we have over 60% no, I'm lying. Uh, almost 60% of the clients are uh, using the 5 gigahertz. And in this uh, environment, we also see that the performance for the 5 gigahertz clients is much, much, much better than the performance on 2.4. Also, because we we're seeing uh, a lot of uh, interference in this environment uh, because of all kinds of uh, other equipment like uh, wireless microphones and uh, things like that. These are some uh, metrics about an uh, outdoor camp event that was done in uh, August in the UK. And uh, there we see uh, around 50-50 uh, distribution. Um, and we also see some clients, uh, so 10 to 15% uh, of the clients that are capable in doing 5 gigahertz, they still connect to the 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, network. Um, and here we also see 75% uh, are smart devices and only 3% are Windows devices. So it's not a typical, uh, uh, typical network, but for uh, the type of event, uh, this was, uh, it's very, uh, it, it was expected that there was uh, less uh, Windows and more uh, Linux uh, over there. So, what can we learn from these numbers? Uh, what we can uh, learn is that uh, 5 gigahertz is uh, still increasing. Uh, we see quite some traction from uh, 11 AC, and as you know, uh, 11 AC only works on 5 gigahertz, so that uh, helps us greatly. Uh, we also see that typically the 5 gigahertz clients will transfer more data over the network. Um, and uh, if we compare the uh, education university network with, uh, uh, with a, a venue network, um, yeah, we see that uh, smart devices uh, typically are newer and have more 5 gigahertz support than uh, the uh, devices uh, uh, that are uh, in, in education. Um, and also, uh, we learned uh, something about DFS, so there are still devices that uh, do not connect to DFS channels. I have a slide uh, on that later on. So, yeah. 
So what uh, did we see? Some clients, uh, they just don't want to connect to, uh, to DFS channels. Um, we had an uh, escalation uh, earlier this year at a hospital. They had Dell uh, uh, tablets with uh, Windows 8 or 8.1. And uh, they had an issue where they uh, move around uh, roaming uh, their Citrix sessions uh, just told. And uh, after investigation, we found out that uh, those tablets just refused to connect to 5 gigahertz. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the 5 gigahertz uh, channels were uh, assigned all in this same area. So you couldn't get from one area to another area without crossing uh, the DFS channel uh, uh, space. Um, so we had to move uh, the channel plan and uh, yeah, put the DFS channels, uh, spread them around over the environment uh, and uh, leave that from uh, the automatic channel assignment. Um, but it solved the issue uh, over there. So what we see, um, we are seeing uh, the 5 gigahertz uh, support. We also see that uh, that recent Apple devices, uh, they tend to pick 5 gigahertz uh, in favor of the 2.4 uh, gigahertz band, which is uh, good. Um, although uh, the battery uh, management of those devices, uh, they just don't scan uh, a lot. So they don't see if there are better APs. So they're still a bit uh, sticky to their access points. And uh, yeah, because of that scanning, we see quite some difference between, uh, uh, between the different, uh, the different uh, implementations and different solutions. Um, but things are improving. Uh, things are improving uh, slowly, but uh, they are uh, uh, improving. So first, um, why should we have uh, good client behavior? Um, one thing is to get uh, just higher data rates. And uh, higher data rates, uh, it does, uh, doesn't only uh, help the client, but uh, because uh, lower data rate take more airtime, it helps uh, the full network. So if you add up all, uh, all traffic over the wireless network, uh, you want to have uh, as high data rates as possible and uh, it also um, uh, uh, improves the battery, uh, battery life because with uh, higher data rates, you need less time in the air uh, to transmit data so you can go to sleep uh, uh, quicker. Um, and uh, yeah, we just have a sparse, uh, 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 small medium, uh, and we need to uh, share the airtime with our clients. And, um, so we need to have good client behavior. And then uh, the question is, how do we uh, get that client behavior? If we look to the difference, uh, most of those uh, mobile devices are uh, developed for home networks. And home networks different, differ from enterprise networks. So where we have a home network, we typically have uh, just one AP. And it doesn't matter where uh, the client is. Uh, it has to connect to that AP. There's no reason to look around for other APs. Uh, there are no other APs. And uh, in this kind of uh, deployment, it makes sense to, uh, to have uh, big antennas on it, to have a maximum range, uh, so you have at least a certain uh, amount of throughput. If we compare that to uh, the uh, the enterprise uh, WLAN, uh, we typically have uh, more access points. And when clients move around, um, we see that uh, uh, yeah, there is uh, many times there is a better AP to connect to, and clients should move from one AP to another, to another, to another, uh, to keep that uh, best uh, signal strength and to keep that uh, best data rate. So how does handover work uh, from, uh, from traditional um, client is connected to the AP? Um, it has a good, decent signal strength. Um, when it moves, the signal strength is, uh, is lowering. 
Um, also, the data rates are lowering, and at some moment, uh, the signal strength is uh, just not uh, good enough. So let it be uh, there. Then suddenly the client panics, screams, are there any other APs? The other APs respond, hey, I'm here, please connect to me. And then uh, he has, an, uh, in this case, uh, four APs uh, that he can choose from. Um, and the client doesn't know which AP to choose. And uh, then randomly he chooses one, or maybe uh, the strongest at that moment, and it will uh, re-authenticate, and then the signal strength is better again. So this is how it uh, typically works, and um, if we uh, look at some metrics, uh, you can see that behavior. This is, uh, this is a good handset, or probably this is a, a voice-optimized uh, handset. You see the signal strength, which are the pink or the purple. I can't see the color, but um, uh, you see it increasing, you see it decreasing, and here at about uh, SNR of 30, it moves over to another AP, and uh, you see that client is uh, roaming very well. By purpose, this says good. I'm not sure about that. I lent this slide, so <laughs> I don't know where this uh, uh, where this comes from. But please uh, uh, give me a shout, and I will uh, will check it for you. By purpose, this is a uh, good client. If we uh, look at another uh, client, this is a. Uh, smartphone, which is not that smart, uh, you see channel of uh, signal is dropping, dropping uh, till uh, 12, uh, 12 dB uh, signal to noise ratio, and then uh, yeah, it's trying to roam and uh, gets a poorer uh, signal quality, it gets uh, uh, dropouts in, uh, in, in, in the signal, and uh, this one is a more typical uh, smartphone. Uh, this you still see uh, drops in here, but uh, yeah, it goes down to 15, uh, 15 dB signal to noise ratio, and um, that's not uh, not optimal from uh, a network uh, perspective. We want to have those uh, clients roaming earlier if possible. If you want to check this on your own network, uh, we have a, a free application. It's called Aruba Utilities. It's only available for Android at the moment. Uh, you can install that uh, application on your Android, and it will show you uh, in the time on which AP you are connected, uh, the signal strength, the, uh, the bit rate. Uh, so this helps you to uh, investigate uh, a network and to see what's happening. And yeah, we see some dropouts uh, during the handover. Uh, this one was quite okay, and we see a move from channel 11 to 48. So from uh, the 2.4 band to the 5 gigahertz band, we see that uh, that client is steered uh, correctly. I'll have some more uh, examples of this uh, later on. So. Traditionally, um, there are quite a few uh, tricks to uh, solve this issue of roaming. And we have uh, uh, described uh, lots of them in uh, what we call validated reference designs. Uh, and those are on the Aruba website. And um, let me pick out two. There's one, uh, optimizing Aruba WLANs for roaming uh, devices, and the other is for high density wireless networks. Um, look different, but uh, the tricks are uh, quite the same. And uh, the goal of those tricks are to save air times, and you do that uh, by getting uh, the client to roam to get higher data rates uh, on the network. And uh, one, uh, uh, one classic trick is to remove the lower data rates from uh, your network. So clients are no, uh, no longer able to use those uh, lower data rates uh, that would take more airtime. If they can't connect on the lower data rate, uh, yeah, they need to look around uh, to see a better AP. And uh, if everything goes well, they move to that other AP and they have a better 
signal and a better, uh, uh, they have a better uh, data rate. Yeah, so uh, that's one of the parts. Uh, it's, uh, it's a trick, so uh, it depends. It depends on the environment. Uh, typically, uh, you cut out all data rates below uh, 24 megabits or so. But it really depends on, uh, on, on, on the network. And we've seen uh, in one case with uh, voice clients uh, where an Android client refused uh, or, or even when you cut out all the lower data rates, it was broadcasting at one megabit. So uh, in that case, we had to uh, we cut out everything below 24 uh, megabits, uh, but left in the one megabit. It's not optimal, but otherwise uh, we couldn't get it work. And that's uh, one of the issues. It's these are tricks. Um, they work somewhat. Um, so they may work uh, great if you deploy them well, if you test them well. It also depends on the clients on the network. Um, but the other side of the, the, uh, the coin is that uh, um, if you set those parameters uh, wrong, you can completely destroy your complete network performance. So if there are tricks, um, how should we do it? So there are standards. Uh, the standards are uh, uh, under development. Those are uh, already adopted. And for uh, roaming clients, uh, the following standards are uh, relevant in my eyes. So uh, with 11D and 11H, we can uh, provide uh, channel and uh, power information to clients. So Clients don't need to scream uh, because they know that the access point is close to them and they can uh, use a lower signal level to, uh, uh, to get uh, less, uh, less interference uh, for other clients. Um, but the, uh, uh, the, the more important are uh, .11k, which has uh, beaconing uh, information, so APs can tell uh, clients information about the network, channels used, APs available, things like that. A, uh, clients can uh, tell the same to the APs, ICDs, APs, uh, and uh, the network can, uh, can use that. Um, and I'll go uh, over those in more detail. Um, there is a fast roaming uh, standard, 11R, uh, which allows uh, clients to move from one AP to another without doing uh, a new authentication. So they can keep their authentication to another access point. And uh, one of the latest uh, in, in line is uh, the 11V standard, which is part of the uh, Wi-Fi Alliance voice certification uh, as a required uh, uh, standard. And uh, 11V uh, uses the other standards to steer the client from the network. So the network has overview over, uh, over all clients over the network. So we can use... Uh, uh, 11V to move clients from one AP to another. The big problem is that uh, those standards are very poorly implemented. So I've not seen a single client that implements 11V at this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish there was a database of clients that support it. Uh, I have the same experience, uh, so uh, typically we end up uh, disabling 11R because some clients just don't like it and uh, they show all kinds of, uh, of, of, of issues. Um, but this is how we should do it, uh, so it doesn't work. Uh, there was a question here. I think it is. Yeah, have you seen any smarter choices by these devices yet? Let me go on. Okay. Mark it. Just on 11R, from what I know about it, you have to have a dedicated SSID just for 11R devices. It's some kind of a mixed SSID. Uh, you put it on on the SSID or you put it off, yeah. 
Yeah. So if you have clients that don't support 11R or don't like uh, 11R, you need to split up uh, the SIDs. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So uh, part of uh, 11K, uh, we see uh, one of the features is that there is a neighbor report. So uh, the access point can tell the clients, and uh, that's both uh, in a broadcast way or in a solicited way. So clients can request such a report, or the network can just uh, broadcast it. Um, access point uh, C can, uh, can explain to the clients uh, X point B is on channel 6, uh, X point D is on channel 52, uh, X point E is on channel 161. So the client already knows from the network uh, which alternative APs are available. There's also something like beacon offset, and you can use that to optimize your battery saving. So you know when the beacons are coming, uh, and you know when uh, such a beacon will, uh, will arrive from, uh, from that access point. So that's one part, and clients can use this information to get a smarter, uh, smarter AP to connect to. The second part is where the client uh, publishes a beacon report. So uh, the client uh, tells to the network, um, I'm hearing uh, APB at this uh, signal level, I'm hearing uh, APD at this signal level, I'm hearing APE at this signal level. So this helps to, uh, for the network to build an overview uh, how clients see the network, because also that's important. Uh, most times it's uh, bi-directional, uh, but in some uh, cases uh, clients uh, just don't see uh, access points. For example, if uh, they're not uh, uh, looking on DFS channels, you can see that from uh, the network. And uh, the third uh, option is that the network can uh, provide channel information so uh, the client knows uh, which channel to use for scanning. So if channels are not in the list, uh, there's no need to scan for other APs on, that, uh, on those channels. And this optimizes uh, the channels. It's, so it depends. Uh, these reports are sent with the beacons, so 10 times a second, um, or uh, when a client asks for it. Um, not sure about these, uh, uh, and these, but probably these are also in the uh, set in the beacons. Um, if you know then which AP is seeing that part of that, you could define a better view which channel is going to arrive at which other. Yeah. Channel. What you're telling now is actually a very good idea. It's not part of the standard, but Aruba implemented it, this as part of client match. I will explain uh, later. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, 11V, if we have uh, uh, information about the, the clients and the network and uh, who sees who and who hears who, uh, we can use uh, 11V to instruct a client uh, move to another AP. So this is uh, something that's uh, missing in all standards and, uh, and why we had to, uh, to do those uh, uh, nasty tricks. Um, what we really needed in the standard is, uh, is a method to move clients from the network because the network has the overview to uh, another AP and that's coming with uh, 11V. So some... Uh, some benefits of uh, 11K over, over scanning. Um, we shouldn't uh, do scanning at all um, because it takes time. Uh, it takes time for the client. It takes uh, time for, uh, for the network. 
Uh, we also see some uh, inaccurate uh, uh, results. So um, probably the people are, who are doing site surveys, um, if you're measuring APs uh, even a few seconds from each other, uh, yeah, there's some fading in it. And uh, that will not give uh, the, best, uh, the best performance uh, that's possible. Also, from the client perspective, uh, if you start scanning, um, it takes power. You need to transmit, you need to respond, you need to process. Um, so if we can uh, get all that information that we get from scanning normally, if you can just get it handed over uh, and use it, um, that would be much better. So this is typically a uh, concern in uh, voice over wireless uh, deployments, where uh, on the uh, on one hand, uh, you want handsets to scan as much as possible, so they can do quick roaming. And even when you're running, you have smooth roams. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's the battery life. And in a uh, yeah, typical uh, hospital, uh, a handset should uh, at least uh, work for nine hours, uh, because people are carrying around it, and uh, lives depend uh, on that. So, um, to make it a bit uh, graphical, um, if we see roaming uh, traditional as, uh, as designed, what we see is uh, we see uh, probes coming from uh, the device uh, when signal strength uh, goes down, it moves over to another AP. In uh, reality, uh, what we see is because of uh, battery life optimization, uh, the probes are only done when clients uh, are reaching a low signal strength. And uh, sometimes that's okay in this case, but in other uh, cases uh, you're too late and you see a drop in the signal. And we can see that in uh, reality. With 11K, if uh, deployed uh, correctly, uh, what we can see is that we see the information coming from the network, so no need for the client to uh, fetch that information. It's just available for the client and uh, can use it to make that uh, roaming decision. So the same image from uh, an 11K uh, perspective. If the client is moving, um, it always has uh, the uh, alternative AP, so it knows in this location. I can see uh, APB and APC in this location. I can see BCD. I can see D here. And uh, at the moment, the signal drops uh, below the critical level. Um, it already knows uh, which AP to connect to, and it decides to connect to APD. Um, and this makes it possible to have very smooth roaming in, uh, in the network. And uh, already uh, talked uh, shortly about client match. Uh, client match is the Aruba implementation from the uh, server and network side uh, part of this. So uh, we uh, we know uh, which APs are in the range of the uh, of the clients, um, and we can even use those uh, uh, those beacons to uh, remove access points that are not a good candidate because they're overloaded or they're on a business channel. Um, it's not in the spec, but it is possible uh, within the spec to make uh, client, uh, dedicated client reports and uh, to just give the, give the client uh, one or two APs to connect to as an, uh, as an alternative. So that's possible and it's uh, implemented in uh, what we call uh, client match. And that makes it possible uh, to continually know and monitor the, uh, the strength of, uh, of a client so we can uh, quickly adapt to uh, changing, uh, changing clients in uh, the network. So if we don't take uh, additional measures, um, this again is Aruba Utilities for free in uh, the uh, Google Play Store we see a uh, signal dropping, 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 uh, drop out, and then at some moment uh, it takes uh, another access point. So this is a uh, Galaxy Nexus client, 
Um, if we look at a, a Nexus 7 tablet, uh, we see that behaves much better. Also, if even with without uh, additional uh, uh, measures, uh, here we see one uh, successful ROM, uh, this one more or less successful from 5 to uh, 2.4. Um, and here again, uh, so we see it depends on the client. Some clients are good, uh, some are uh, bad. And uh, the Galaxy S4 is an example of a very poor client. So we see it's sticking here to very low signal levels. It's even dropping out completely here for 10, 20 seconds. Did you identify why the device was much better? Did it adapt to later standards, or was just the driver implementation better done? Uh, that's very difficult to, uh, to decide. You can just uh, see what's happening, and uh, this is what we are seeing happening. Um, we can, so here we have them all uh, together. If you uh, enable uh, roaming optimizations, and I think in uh, this case, uh, it's a uh, client match, uh, we see improvement. And uh, this is like we want to see it. So strong signal going down, going down, and it's probably stationary here. Uh, but still here we see that, uh, that Nexus 7 does much better uh, on the network than uh, this Galaxy. And uh, we see the Galaxy Nexus uh, quite improved uh, from uh, changes in the network. So. We still have poor clients, and we yeah. cannot completely solve that. We can optimize the network. And uh, do you get in contact with Broadcom, Qualcomm, and talk to them about your results and ask them what they could do to improve um, <coughs> the situation? Uh, I mean, not for me as an SE. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I mean a pre-sales person, uh, but uh, I'm quite sure that in, uh, in our development teams, uh, uh, the people are working uh, with those vendors. Um, what we know, uh, at least for Apple, it's very difficult uh, to even get uh, pre-published uh, uh, versions of, of okay. iOS. Okay. Uh, and even when you have it uh, at the last moment, uh, they change things. So uh, unfortunately, uh, it's, uh, it's quite, quite difficult to, uh, to get that uh, uh, interaction uh, done. Um, and okay. I think presentations like this uh, should, uh, should raise awareness uh, and Again, uh, to be honest, um, Samsung has consumers as their customers. They don't have uh, enterprises as their customers. So uh, like Apple says, we are a, a consumer cons company and kind of uh, doesn't matter us uh, that you're using it in enterprise, uh, but you're on your own. Yeah. Um, Things are changing, uh, but we need to keep in mind that uh, those vendors are selling their mass products and making their money in consumers and not in, uh, not in enterprises. Okay, thanks a lot. And um, on your side regarding client support for these latest standards, so <laughs> keep up the good work. Yeah. So if there is 11K, uh, why does Aruba have something like, uh, like client match? So um, one of the things is that uh, 11K is uh, fully optional standard, so uh, even if we are uh, feeding clients with information, uh, we don't have, uh, we can't uh, uh, certainly be certain that, uh, that clients are uh, indeed moving from one AP uh, to the other. So it seems from testing that it is improving, uh, but you don't have real control over it. And uh, what we can do with client match is uh, because of that overview of the network and all the clients, uh, we can, uh, and it says nicely, uh, force a handover. Um, preferably, we do that with uh, the 11V standard. But as I mentioned before, it's poorly implemented. Um, as a, uh, a last resort, if clients are sticky, 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 and go to the very low data rates, uh, we just kick them off the network in the hope that they uh, connect to another place in the network, uh, freeing up the airtime for all the other clients. And 
we see quite some uh, good results from that. Um, so with the standards, uh, it's even uh, getting better. Uh, but for now, um, uh, yeah, we see uh, we see improvement. So to summarize, um, we need clients to do uh, to do better roaming. Um, we don't see to, to do them uh, to do that uh, right now. Um, yeah, 11K uh, would be uh, uh, would be great to uh, to have it uh, supported and uh, reauthentication with uh, 11R or opportunistic key caching. Uh, so you have smooth roams in the enterprise network and keep uh, the highest data rates and uh, use the least airtime uh, that is uh, that is needed. We've seen this Aruba Utilities. It helps you to uh, to see this. So that's. Uh, what I got for you, um, are there any questions? Uh, about the R reporting and everything. So this is a report from an access point to the client, right? The and 11R. Uh, I mean K, I'm sorry. K, the, yeah, so yeah. this is a report from, from the access point to, to the client. It's both. So it can be both ways. You can so let me. And you'll get the report back if it's supported. But, but, but the report. It, well, you can request it, but the report is from from the access point. What the access point hears, right? From from around. We have two. We have three parts of that. So first part is uh, the network or the access point is broadcasting. Uh, these are the APs available in your neighborhood. The client can use this information to make a roaming decision without probing or scanning. Uh, it just knows, uh, yeah, let's pick uh, uh, D because I don't uh, like this channel and uh, I don't want to be on 2.4. Um, so this feeds the client with information. It's up to the client to do something with it. And the other way around is that the client are reporting, so the network can ask the client, uh, please do a probe, uh, which APs are you seeing? and it's responding, uh, I'm seeing this APs at this signal level. So this uh, feeds information into the network uh, to help the network to do 11V or in worst case, uh, do a disconnect of the client. So the whole 11K protocol is built basically as a dialogue. One station, be it AP or client, can request something and there is about, I think, eight or nine or maybe even 10 possible reports there. Link, you can actually ask a station to stay on link, measure something, and give you some for well, report for certain duration, or just give it the beacons. And it could be AP, could be client, could be both, right? Normally, you request something, you get something back. Potentially, you can also just broadcast your reports, and others might or might not make use of it. Problem is, the last part, making use of it, because most of the clients don't, right? Unless they're specifically built for it. And that's the problem, I think the, one of the key outcomes and results of these conversations should be raising the awareness of our customers that when they bring their wonderful stuff in the enterprise, don't expect it to work, right? And then if it works, awesome, <laughs> right? And we're doing stuff, right? We as vendors, we're trying to implement some things here to make those inherently broken devices because they were not designed to work in the enterprise to work better in the enterprise and when it works, hallelujah. When it doesn't, well, it was never meant to. Right? Yep. Well, maybe that's too Another question off, over there. But <laughs> Just a comment. I come from the University of Copenhagen and we have, we can't do that uh, thing. We need to have the stuff to work as good as possible that the students brings us. So we're, an, we're not, uh, not a typical enterprise, but we sometimes take the problems beforehand that you will sh show up in enterprise as well. Yeah. So, okay. so le let me rephrase it a little bit. <laughs> so yes, we want this. We want all stuff to work as best, right? As best as we can. Thing is about expectations. You want to put the customers' expectations where they should be, not up there. Like, oh, Apple told me the iPad is magic, so it must work everywhere. Even without Wi-Fi, it just must, right? <laughs> Question on the back. Does that mean that um, the client match only works if the client supports 11K? Because it's heavily uh, depending on the client's beacon report. 
Um, uh, yes and no, it works better if the client supports uh, 11K, um, but also if the client doesn't uh, uh, support it, we can see the link rate. And if we see uh, a low link rate, and if we can hear that client, uh, the, the, the beacons from other APs, uh, we can do a guesstimation of the location and a guesstimation on uh, the best AP. So uh, 11K uh, definitely uh, improves uh, client match, improves uh, probably everything. Uh, but um, even when you don't have it, uh, yeah, client match will still work. Oh, one in the back, maybe. It's oh. um, so you said uh, most client devices are for uh, consumer class or consumer grade. Um, there are companies like BlackBerry uh, who are targeting at enterprises. Um, do you have any experience with BlackBerry? I don't have any experience with BlackBerry, and to be honest, I'm unsure if that will change. But um, uh, uh, yes, there are enterprise uh, 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 great Wi-Fi devices. Uh, for example, I know a company called Escom. They have uh, voice over wireless handsets. And uh, those uh, handsets, uh, you can configure them uh, to scan which channels. Uh, and uh, what they will do is, uh, if the signal drops uh, below minus, uh, minus 70, it will uh, start aggressively probing for new access points, um, and you can configure that. So you can uh, match the uh, phone co configuration with, uh, with the network configuration. Um, and I've seen uh, yeah, very good results uh, with that. Um, on that same network, uh, we tried to do uh, a voiceover, uh, uh, voiceover Wi-Fi client on a smartphone. Um, the customer had a uh, hardened phone because it was, uh, was in healthcare. Um, and we found that uh, every roam uh, get a drop uh, in the voice of between uh, 0.5 and uh, 2 seconds. Um, when I installed the, uh, the same SIP client on my phone, uh, it was seamless. So it's still it's very uh, client uh, dependent and you can uh, build uh, software uh, as much as you, uh, as you want as long as the device, the underlying operating system, is not optimized for enterprise networks, uh, you will experience uh, poor roaming. And some devices are better than others. Um, and yeah, dedicated uh, voice over wireless handsets, uh, yeah, those, typically, yeah, those are expected to uh, perform better, and that's uh, what we see in practice. There was a question in the back. Okay, there's uh, client issues. I believe we have to troubleshoot a lot of them. Um, the question was there uh, about the database of devices. Uh, is there somewhere on the Ruba side uh, some experiences that we have? Some are consumer uh, that are very difficult to troubleshoot, but there is as well enterprise, uh, for example, the, the symbol warehouse applications, all these hardened devices. Mm -hmm. do, do you have a database? Because sometimes the clients ask, yeah, tell me, what I should look into. Yeah. Um, let me tell two things about that. Um, first of it, uh, there are awful lots of different devices in uh, the field. So it's impossible to build a database uh, of all those uh, devices. Um, if you are mentioning uh, specific devices, uh, like there is for uh, some medical equipment, uh, like there is for voice over Wi-Fi phones, uh, with uh, quite some vendors there is uh, interoperability testing. So there are uh, reports for, for Draeger, for Philips, for, for ESCOM, uh, for Polycom, uh, on how to uh, configure your device and the network to uh, operate successfully. So uh, we have uh, quite of that information available. Uh, some of it uh, can be found on our website. Uh, some of it uh, can be found on the uh, device vendor uh, website. Uh, some of it uh, can be found through uh, the, the, the systems engineers of, uh, of Aruba or through the, uh, through the Aruba tech. Um, 
I'd love to have uh, a database like that. And um, I'm going to uh, propose it uh, once again. Uh, because it's, uh, it would be very, uh, very useful, uh, not only for Aruba customers, for, but for uh, you know, wireless engineers uh, uh, at all uh, in the whole space. And uh, I think that's uh, one thing to mention. And also, uh, Sean is over here. Um, we have a community. It's called Airheads. I think I should have put a slide on it. Uh, Airheads is uh, a wireless community. It's run by Aruba, but it is a wireless community and probably... Uh, most of you have been there um, also for uh, generic uh, wireless questions or uh, even for uh, uh, competitor uh, wireless questions. Uh, there's a place on, uh, on Airheads and it's uh, actively maintained and the community is uh, growing and growing uh, and I've seen uh, yeah, quite quick and good responses to questions uh, from the field. So that's uh, one more thing uh, to look at, Airheads. Sorry. What was the question? Oh, I was just asking, can anyone join Airheads? The question is, can anyone join Airheads? Yes, anyone can join Airheads. Yeah. And uh, that is because we, uh, we don't want to keep the information to ourselves, uh, because we believe that if we share the information, uh, the whole uh, wireless community is, uh, is is having benefits from that. Um, so it's yeah, it's 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 two way uh, uh, two way benefit. So if those are the questions, it's uh, ten ten. So there's uh, only five minutes left to the next uh, presentation. I'd like to thank you. I'm, I'll be around uh, uh, today and tomorrow. So if you have questions uh, about the presentation, about uh, wireless in general, or about uh, uh, security features and authentication, uh, yeah, please clamp me on. <laughs>